and welcome to High School Physics Explained. And you must be thinking, what the heck? I thought this was a physics video, not a music video. And it is. It is a physics video, but I'm going to use music to demonstrate an important concept in understanding of waves, and that is called beats. Now, if you're a musician, you often have to tune your instruments. And in this case, the guitar is tuned by comparing one string to the another and to, by placing your finger on one fret and causing it to vibrate, standing wave of course, and comparing it to the next string, you see that they're roughly the same. But a musician would pick up with the fact that they are slightly different. How? Well, let's play the two together. Well, in this case, they're fairly similar. But let me exaggerate by increasing the tension on one of the strings. Again, I'll play the two notes. And then the second note. When I play the two together, you can hear this vibration, this wah-wah type sound, this changing in amplitude. And the musician will use that principle to adjust the tension of the string so that that amplitude variation decreases and eventually diminishes to zero. Listen carefully. Getting better. Roughly right. However, I have an app that actually demonstrates this better that allows me to play two different signals in each of the different speakers that I have here. So that frequency that I'm now playing on this speaker has a frequency of 503 hertz. On the other speaker, I have something that's similar, but actually 500 hertz. Let me play the two together. Now you were hearing this vibration, this changing in amplitude, and that is beats. And the rate of those beats is equal to the difference in the frequencies. So with 503 in one channel and 500 hertz in the other channel, the frequency of those beats, those vibrations, those changes in amplitude is equal to 3 hertz. Now, if I go to this channel, if I go to this channel on this case and reduce that by one hertz, you can hear the rate decreases. Now, there's one hertz difference, and again, you can hear that. And of course, if there's no difference, you have no vibration, you have no beats. And that is in essence what a musician does. They're, they're trying to ensure that there is no beats. Because if you have beats, you have a difference in frequency and you don't want differences in frequency. But let's examine this more closely from a physics perspective. So what I've done now is I've input the signals that I get out of my iPad from the two channels into this cathode ray oscilloscope. And it allows us to an analyze the sound. So, here you see a lovely sine curve which represents the sound, in this case, of the frequency of 502 hertz. And so we have that period over there that allows us to work out the frequency if you wanted to do it that way. If I turn that off and now turn on the other one, you can see they're practically identical. But are they? Because the second one is 500 hertz. It has a variation of 2 hertz. Let me play both of them. As you can see, the amplitude is changing at a rate of around two hertz. Again, this is interference at play. Let's examine this at a deeper level. So let's examine exactly how those beats are formed graphically. So here is our first wave, and our wave has a particular frequency that you can be term determined by, of course, how many cycles are here along a given time period. And of course, the separation between the peaks is your period. Here is my second wave. Now, this looks almost identical. However, if we put both on the screen, you're going to see the fact that one has a slightly different frequency, a slightly different period. And at this point over here, the peaks are in full alignment. 
And so at this point, you're going to get constructive interference. Over here, you can see that the picks are not in alignment. We have destructive interference here. And so if I add these two waves together, I'm going to get this effect. And so you can see the amplitude varies with respect to time. We have here clearly a very low amplitude because we have destructive interference between my two waves. But because of the slightly different frequencies, a little bit later, they constructively add and therefore our amplitudes are greater. So let's summarize. Beats are basically a variation of amplitude with similar, but nonetheless slightly different frequencies. They are an example of interference, both constructive and destructive. And finally, the frequency of the beats is equal to the difference between the two frequencies, the modulus thereof. In other words, you won't have a negative value. I hope that has helped you understand beats. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share the video. My name is Paul from High School Physics Explained. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.